Um, SKR network is Apple's attempt uh, ultimately to protect user privacy while uh, still delivering deterministic uh, measurement to advertising companies, right? So that uh, when a publisher runs an ad for an app install and the user clicks on the ad, goes to the app store, installs the app, the publisher knows that an install has happened, even if they don't know uh, which user exactly uh, was driving the install. I think there's an element of um, uh, uh, there's an element of deterministic uh, attribution that comes into picture here that currently is driven mostly by mobile measurement partners. Uh, there's a bunch of these great companies out there, uh, you know, Branch, Apps, Flyer, Kachawa, uh, Adjust, and so forth, that have done a really good job over the years of building some sophisticated capabilities that help advertisers not only, uh, you know, uh, measure deterministic outcomes of their performance campaigns, but actually measure LTV, measure, uh, you know, look at a bunch of different analytics uh, inside their application that allows them to be smarter and better about how they do user acquisition. Uh, and so MMPs do have a much wider role to play than just measurement. And it's clear that SKAD network in its current form is not trying to play that role um, or can't, even if it intends to, right? There's a, there's a very specific role it is playing. Um, and so I, I think the world will evolve uh, to some extent to figure out how to utilize uh, SKAD network's deterministic measurement uh, to run advertising while also utilizing current day mobile measurement partners uh, capabilities uh, in terms of uh, analytics, intelligence, uh, you know, ROAS and LTV measurements and, uh, you know, a bunch of different tools that, uh, that they've built out. So the, what you're envisioning for the future is one where SKI network is just one source of truth, perhaps, that performance marketers are, are utilizing and that they will continue working with MMPs to combine all sources of knowledge that they have available to them to make the most uh, intelligent, effective performance marketing decisions. That's correct. So there's going to be multiple types of advertisers, right? Different advertisers making different choices. And there's about four or five different scenarios that might play out uh, depending on the type of advertiser. But there's a few factors about SK Ad Network that will determine this position. Right. Number one is SKAD network really puts the power of uh, attribution in the hands of the supply side. Um, this is new. I mean, uh, a lot of user acquisition is driven by DSPs uh, that are pure demand side players and buying inventory programmatically. They don't typically have an owned operated uh, publishing property or SDKs that are widely you know, distributed. And so while uh, SKAD network gets rolled out, DSPs have to figure out how they work well with the supply side or the publisher side, basically, to get, get the attribution piping going. That's one big difference for SKI Network versus MMPs. Uh, the second one is, uh, I do believe that SKI Network has a long journey to, uh, it to traverse before it becomes as sophisticated as current day mobile measurement partners in post-install uh, measurements, right? LTV, ROAS, uh, just looking at the funnel of events inside the application once the user's already installed uh, to make more intelligent decisions about uh, you know, the UA side. And so there's a lot of sophistication on the MMP side that SK Ad Network definitely doesn't bring to the table today. We do believe that SK Ad Network will continue to improve and over time will become very sophisticated. But today here and now, uh, you know, it's not. Uh, the third big one uh, I do feel is uh, SK Ad Network limits uh, the number of ad campaign lines that can be set up. This is very tactical. I mean, it's a very, uh, at a, uh, it's tactical at a trading level, right? Advertisers like to create different tracking, uh, different campaign lines to just test new creatives, new inventory, uh, new geographies, right? There's a bunch of different iterations of the same campaign that advertisers like to run. And it's a form of A-B testing uh, uh, at the advertiser level that they carry out with help from the MMPs tracking tools. Uh, with the campaigns being limited to 100 lines, uh, it really limits the ability for the advertiser to experiment a lot. Uh, it's very tactical. I mean, I'm sure you know it's one uh, product release away from changing at Apple Sen, but you know here now it's a huge constraint for advertisers. Um, number four, I mean, SK Ad Network. Uh, you know, offers these SCAD network IDs that identify the provider who ran the ad, right? And that's unique to each um, 
uh, to each company, like, uh, you know, and what it does is it forces and it relates back to the point I was making before about supply side being uh, in control of uh, the ad network uh, or the ad attribution. Um, somewhere publishers, supply side platforms and demand side platforms will need to play well with each other in the SK ad network world uh, and ensure that a single ID is made available through that chain uh, for the ad that has been run. Uh, in the current world, you know, with IDFA, you don't need that. Uh, you use a DSP's impression ID or click ID to, uh, you know, identify users' uh, actions and attribute it back to a certain DSP. And that's not possible. Uh, so likely, you know, the partnership between DSPs and SSPs and publishers needs to tighten a little bit more. And likely it's just, you know, manifests itself as an integration and nothing more. But that's interesting. Um and number five, which is a big one too, is uh, you know view through attribution, which has been a um, uh, which has been uh, used by advertisers to increase their reach and uh, ability uh, to use programmatic channels, especially uh, to drive their performance campaigns. I mean, it's not available on SCAD network. SCAD network only supports click through attribution, uh, which takes us back a few years in terms of the sophistication of attribution, right? Uh, and so that's another factor weighing in. So that's a long way to say there's at least five, six different things, uh, different decisions that the advertiser is making when they choose to go with SK ad network alone. And I don't think uh, it is that simple a choice today, here and now. Uh, of course, that is not to say that SK ad network isn't evolving and uh, you know, down the line advertisers will, will probably have uh, you know, more ability to make these types of choices. Um, coming to uh, the second part of your question, which is to say, you know, what will advertisers do? There's four or five different scenarios here, right? Some advertisers, despite all of the factors that I mentioned, may just say, look, I'm going to switch over to SCAD network and improve as it improves. There's another family of advertisers that will say, look, I will just use my MMP as I do today, even if it's at a, in a limited fashion, because they still have Android, they still have 30% of iOS. Um, where I do believe most advertisers will gravitate to is a slightly evolved version of those two different versions that I talked about. One is using uh, their existing mobile measurement partner, but with a mix of deterministic and probabilistic attribution. Now, mind you, Apple does try to allude to the fact that they will try to limit uh, probabilistic measurement or identification of a user as much as possible. At the same time, I don't believe that Apple is in control of what happens outside of its ecosystem. And so there are you know, strong companies out there that have identification that pans not just in app, but in app plus web plus TV, you know, there's identi identity is a big thing in the ad tech industry. And so probabilistic identification will continue to evolve. And so advertisers will have the ability to continue using their current MMP, but with a slightly more sophisticated version of probabilistic attribution. Uh, we do foresee that that is going to be a one of the default options that customers go for. It'll be a large number of customers taking this option. The second one, which likely is more sophisticated, needs more work across the ecosystem, is advertisers choosing to use a combination of SK ad network for deterministic click-through attribution with their current MMP for probabilistic attribution, view-through attribution, and potentially LTV measurement uh, you know, across the funnel. Uh, I do think advertisers don't want to lose what they have with respect to uh, with respect to the final measurements and the analytics and the insights, and so they may find a middle path where while it is um, while SK Ad Network plays a very strong role in deterministic attribution, uh, it plays with an MMP structure. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, coming uh, to answer your question briefly after talking ten minutes about it is uh, a combination of SK Ad Network plus MMP seems to be where the industry will head, at least in the short to medium term. 